Huge stakes as the nation's highest court takes a third crack at Obamacare, which could mean millions of Americans losing their medical coverage. Challengers of the Affordable Care Act say that the law clearly reads that only those that buy health insurance on state exchanges, not federal, can get subsidies. Joining me now to discuss all of this is the president of the American Action Forum, Doug Holtzekin, Town Hall senior political reporter Guy Benson, and Manhattan Institute scholar Ovik Roy. I have a bang-up roundtable here to get into this. I'm going to start, though, with Doug. So, uh, Doug, you had somebody listening to this 80-minute uh, hearing and both sides emerging declaring victory. What really happened? And what about that swing vote? What are we hearing? Well, I think that both sides made a, a pretty good case. Uh, there are two justices whose views I think are going to be crucial. Uh, one is Justice Kennedy, and uh, Justice Kennedy focused today on the question of whether if uh, the the, the uh, court overturned uh, the Affordable Care Act, whether it would constitute some sort of coercion of the states, uh, similar to the idea of the Medicaid expansions, mandatory mm. coercion uh, the last time they were in front of the Supreme Court. Um, but most people think that's uh, probably a, a couple rulings away from what's germane for this decision. So uh, he, he may yet still be in, in favor of uh, overturning. Uh, and then Chief Justice Roberts was essentially silent at today's hearing, uh, didn't uh, question, uh, intervened only once, and uh, probably is the swing vote and whose views remain pretty murky. So uh, I, I find this fascinating because we... You, well, Doug, you and I have been there uh, for one of the hearings together, <laughs> yes. uh, talking to people, interviewing folks. Guy, to you, this is also a political story, obviously. What's at mm -hmm. stake here for the administration? What's at stake here for the president? Well, there's a lot at stake. And by the way, I apologize for the frog in my throat. Uh, I do not want Obamacare, though. Um, I think that there's a lot at stake for the administration, Jerry, uh, because if this, if the court comes down and says that the law, in fact, reads the way exactly uh, that it was written, then you're going to have millions of people across most states in the country ineligible for generous Obamacare taxpayer-funded subsidies. So it will throw the law into complete chaos, and the future of that law, the viability of that law, will be in more doubt and more question than it has been uh, in a very long time. In fact, since before it passed. So, uh, Ovik, to you, I know you have opinions on this, but I want to ask you about just the practical aspects uh, of this lawsuit, King versus Burwell. It's basically about four words in the law, right? It gets down to the nitty gritty. What is being debated here? What's being debated is whether uh, Obamacare, the law itself, says that subsidies have to flow through state-based exchanges, that is, as exchanges established by a state, uh, if, or if that can also be done through an HHS-based exchange, a federal exchange, and those subsidies can flow that way. The reason why that's important is because states were in the process of setting up these state exchanges to capture those subsidies when the Internal Revenue Service said, no, actually, you don't have to set up an exchange. The federal government can do it for you. Uh, and that allowed uh, the, the states to say, okay, we won't set up exchanges anymore. Because the, the federal government, the Obama administration, was worried that some states wouldn't set up exchanges and thereby fail to implement the law as much as they would like. So that's how this all got started. And I will say something that really came out of this hearing that was very interesting is Justice Alito said that one way to avoid the disruption is for the Supreme court to issue a stay of the implementation of a ruling overturning the IRS's decision. So we might avoid this whole disruption situation altogether if the Supreme Court says that implementing their ruling could take place in six months' time or 18 months' time. Wow, circles within circles. Mm -hmm. Doug, to you, I, I have to tell you, this, this is so complicated at this point. I know a lot of Americans are just wondering, if I'm getting the subsidies, if King versus Burwell succeeds, will I continue getting them? What's going to happen? Uh, we don't know. Uh, I, as was just mentioned, the Supreme Court could basically put off implementation of its decision if it chose to overturn uh, for quite some time. And so subsidies would continue to flow. Uh, I think it's a, a very safe bet uh, that people would see an alternative system put into place. We have seen the leadership uh, among Republicans in both the House and the Senate uh, take to the editorial pages of the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal to say, in the event that the court rules in favor of King over Burwell, uh, we have a plan which we can legislate and put in place so that people who have subsidies will continue to get them, that they will have less in the way of uh, ironclad uh, regulatory approaches to insurance, so there'll be more affordable options out there and you'll have uh, a greater opportunity to shop for something you like. 
And th that response, um, combined with any sort of you know, window that the Supreme Court offers, is really the, the assurance to people that not only will the subsidies continue to flow, but there will not be dramatic disruption of the individual insurance markets right. in these states. And, and that's really the key. Well, Guy, to you, what's the political nature of this? Because Republicans, both in the House and the Senate, have come up with bills. I get the impression, although they don't seem to want to talk a lot about it, that they're basically doing what Doug is saying here, which is, you know, we're not going to get rid of the subsidies and make everybody angry. We're going to continue them. Is that your read? Yeah, and I think part of it that's sort of frustrating, Jerry, I think there are a lot of Republicans who would actually like the Supreme Court to bail them out and determine that this is all fine, the federal exchange is fine, and sort of let the Republicans off the hook from this sticky political situation that they would be in if that were to be the case. I think that's a huge mistake. This is a real chance to lead. It's a real chance to replace a lot of Obamacare with something a lot better. So we'll see what the court ends up doing. And I'll just point out, talking to some court watchers today, it is almost always such a huge mistake to try to read the tea leaves about who's going to vote to which way based on just 80 minutes of <laughs> yeah. oral argument. Ovik, before we, before we let you guys go, tell me quickly, you believe that the Republicans will fail here, right? The Republicans will fail to what? To pass a, uh, right. a, a new King, bill? No, King yeah. versus Burwell is, is not going to go over. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the Supreme Court's going to decide, but I do think it's extremely important if it goes in the way that uh, conservatives favor for Republicans to advance a reform that would allow these states to actually run their own health care systems in the way they see fit. I think there's a real opportunity here for advocates of reform to allow, through Congress, states to reform or replace Obamacare state by state. It's a historic opportunity. What I worry about is that there's all these divisions in the Republicans in Congress. Some people say, let's do nothing, let's just let the law That's blow right. up. Some people say, let's actually advance the reforms we've always wanted to advance. And unless those two sides can agree, Republicans won't do anything. And if Republicans do nothing, what will happen is those red states that haven't set up exchanges will effectively be forced to do so. They'll be forced to implement Obamacare because Congress will not give them another alternative. All right, well, we've got a long way to go. Doug Guy and Ovik, thanks for coming on tonight. Great to see you. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you.